Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones. We're going over a great subject that is gaining a lot of traction over the last two and three years and that is why are we spraying foam underneath uh, slabs? So concrete slab, whether it's going to be heated or not, but definitely if it's going to be heated, why are we putting the spray foam down as opposed to rigid? And I think I've got four really cost-effective smart points. Number one is the seal. Uh, the fact that we are giving you a seamless product, uh, no joints, no seams that have to be taped. So with conventional products, you're going to have to get down and seal it to the edge, seal each board to each piece. And this has become code now for radon gas and moisture control. And with the spray foam, you're putting on a liquid applied product, you don't have the seams. So we can fit irregular shapes, slopes, um, stepped edges. And in the case of this picture, you're seeing a structural uh, floor, so there's piles in the middle, and we are able to go around the pile pads and detail out the insulation. So it's just very, very quick. Item number two is contact. The spray foam is in contact with the void form, uh, sacrificial plywood, rock, whatever the substrate is going to be. But particularly when the ground is sloping away and moving at odd angles, Rigid board stock has more difficulty staying in place, being formed in place, being cut. Instead, we just roll up, get the hose out, start spraying, and we will conform to all sorts of irregular shapes. And that also removes uh, hollow spots and voids between the insulation and the substrate. So it's very good to have intimate contact to the, sub to the substrate to the ground. The third point is strength. Um, the foam, once it's in place, you can walk on it, you can jump on it. As you can see, you can put the rebar in, you can put all the piping in that you need. And no, the foam is not going to shift and snap and break easily. If you jump on it and want to wreck it, you can. But under normal construction uh, processes, the foam is plenty strong enough. It has upwards of a 30 PSI compressive strength. So we've seen rigid board stock break and snap. Uh, especially corners and edges uh, where things have a little bit of a gap behind them. It's become so much of an issue, especially on backfill, that more and more people, architects, engineers, concrete people are trying to switch over to graphite infused rigid board stock so that they have additional strength for when they're dropping uh, backfill onto it and pumping out concrete. But the spray foam inherently has that strength because it's contouring to the substrate below. And the fourth and final point is that we don't bring materials to site. So if you were dealing with five or six or 10,000 square feet that needed to be insulated, you'd have to stock all that uh, rigid board stock on site. It would need to be out of the wind. It'd need to be out of being stolen, uh, being damaged. And sometimes that can be a real hassle where you're stacking everything up. So with us, it's a truck, it's a trailer. We pull up, whether it's one or whether it's two, we pull the hose out, there's no materials on site, no need to store anything, everything's in the trailer, pull the hose out, start spraying, and you've got your rigid insulation being installed. So it keeps your site clean and neat, and this is why these four points, the seal, the contact, the strength, and no materials on site, we're seeing more and more contractors just say, you know what, it's not worth my time to put rigid board stock down, I think I'm going to go with the closed cell spray foam got all the engineering we've got all the approvals so now it's just a piece of cake to go out and specify it and start using it and that's why it's gaining a lot more momentum so if you like this video click the subscribe button quick click the like share with your friends and we'll see you on the next one thank you